you can't live up to that image that you have of yourself. In my head. Hey everybody, it's a little bit breezy out today, so I apologize. I'll try to shield the phone from the wind as much as I can. Also, a quick note for anybody who doesn't watch the whole video, this is my 299th video, and so I want to make my 300th video special, as I typically do on the 100s on my channel. So I may go missing for a few days, but if you're new here, I have 300 other videos, so if you like mental health, hit subscribe, and you'll be sure to see plenty more here on this channel. So last night I was reading this paper by Elsa Ronningstam. She's a researcher who looks into narcissistic personalities specifically and she's very good at what she does and as I was reading it reminded me how frustrated that I get that people don't understand what narcissistic personality disorder is there's a lot of stuff on the internet about how they're evil people they're terrible people get away from them and I understand why that exists I have been in relationships with people who have had narcissistic traits it's very difficult to deal with if you don't know what it is that you're dealing with what bothers me though is that we don't know how to deal with it and yet it's a pretty common thing so why don't we know how to deal with this so I wanted to talk today about what it's like living with NPD. Not that I've had the disorder myself. I have had traits. We've all had those traits in our lives. Whether we want to recognize it or not, we all have the potential to be narcissistic. So I have a general idea from reading things like this paper on what it's like to live with NPD and talking with people who have NPD. So I want to give some perspective for those who maybe don't no. The first thing that came to my mind when thinking about NPD is that rage that we hear about, the narcissistic rage. Well, we have a system in our body, the rage system. It's a neurological system. We all have it. We all have the capacity to be angry and to get rageful about things. So why is it that we get rageful in the first place? I can't help it, guys. It's just windy today. Well, my understanding of the rage system is that the rage system goes on either during fight or flight, when we get triggered by something, we fear for our lives, and sometimes rage is that attempt to fight back and to feel in control of things. But we also get rageful when we're trying to do something repeatedly, like we're working towards a goal, and we can't accomplish it or we don't feel like we're accomplishing something and this is going to happen a lot for people who have narcissistic personality disorder they always have this view of themselves that they are capable of anything that they're the best at things and when they come up against a wall that's really frustrating and that rage system is going to come on and i'm sure you've experienced this yourself where you've been working on a project you keep trying you keep trying and no matter what you do it doesn't seem to work out that's the same thing that a person with narcissistic personality disorder goes through now there's a caveat to that which is that not everybody experiences rage the same way. Sometimes the seeking system may actually be the problem here and what happens is when you try to accomplish something it doesn't happen enough you start to experience it as depression instead because you're not getting the dopamine reward from accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish and so instead of being angry maybe you were angry in the past but you've gotten angry so many times like you just give up and you just feel depressed and you feel like there's no point to doing anything it sucks. When researchers talk about NPD, they talk about two different kinds of NPD, and there's different words that we use. I think of it as grandiose is one kind, and the other kind is vulnerable, but grandiose is sometimes also called thick-skinned or overt, and the vulnerable kind is also sometimes called thin-skinned or covert. But even the researchers understand that this is not like the way somebody's always going to operate, it's just their typical pattern. So people can have grandiose and vulnerable ways of being. It's not like you're stuck in one or the other. I should also mention that when we're talking about narcissism, we have two personality traits that we're looking at. We're looking at grandiosity, which is that feeling that you're above other people. It's that feeling that you can accomplish anything that you want. And then there's also that feeling of attention seeking, just wanting people to admire you, wanting people to look at you, to notice you, to always have to focus on you. The grandiose narcissist, the overt one, the thick-skinned one, is the one that we're typically thinking of when we hear about narcissism. And this is where people get this idea that they're evil or whatever, but if you're somebody who's typically grandiose, then you probably, when you hear somebody say like you're narcissistic, you probably just like brush it off, you dismiss them, you think like, yeah, like you know anything about me. And you just generally feel like everybody should be admiring you all the time. You're the best at what you do. And anybody that challenges that, you probably just think like, well, F them, I don't care about them. They don't know anything about me. They're a piece of garbage. <laughs> you probably keep around a lot of friends who like your company, you have a good social life, you probably probably spend a lot of time maybe at work or doing some kind of art or whatever it is that makes you special. You head into that and that's what defines your life and you like that. You like being admired for what you do. Anyone who challenges you, you either turn other people against that person or you just fight back against them or you cut them out of your life. They're blocked, they're out, they're gone. 
you don't need that in your life anymore. That's how you feel. You probably don't care for emotions. You probably like to be admired for your body and for sex and being sexy. You may spend a lot of time fantasizing about all the great things that you're doing. You may even have like ideas of things you'd like to do in the future and instead of thinking about like all the work that it's going to take to get there, you're just thinking about how everyone's going to praise you for it. You're going to be on the cover of magazines. You're going to be a celebrity and how awesome that's going to feel. Every now and then though, somebody in your social circle may turn against you or may put you down. Somebody might just catch you off guard and show you that you're not as great as you might think you could be and that could get you really pissed off. That's where your rage system comes online. This especially could happen in an intimate relationship and this is where you get the clue that maybe something's not right about your personality here because this is how it's harming your life and it may not seem like it's harming your life very often because you probably just dismiss that person and think F them, I don't need them in my life. But if they get you good enough, if they burn you good enough, then you're gonna, it, it's gonna hit you. You're gonna realize like, oh, there's something about me that drives people away, people who I really do want in my life. Now, going to the vulnerable type of narcissism, this is the one that we don't think about as often and it's unfortunate because these people are suffering. The person who's more grandiose, you probably don't suffer that often. It's only when somebody burns you that you feel it. But somebody who's got the vulnerable kind of narcissism, they're frustrated all the time. Somebody with vulnerable narcissism is not able to meet those goals and aspirations that they have for themselves and they see it every day. They see evidence all the time that they're not stacking up to these grandiose visions of what they want for themselves. They can't make themselves believe that they are there and so they feel vulnerable constantly. They're frustrated. They're always trying to prove to somebody else like I'm I'm good enough like look at me you should be looking at me this is where the attention seeking comes in it can be really really frustrating living as somebody who has vulnerable narcissism because you feel like you're always having to defend yourself somebody with the grandiose narcissism if somebody tries to put them down they can probably brush it off and say like well whatever I'm better than you but somebody with a more vulnerable presentation of narcissism you probably have a hard time when somebody puts you down. You get really defensive really quickly and you feel like you have to prove to them like that you're better than them and typically you'll say something like you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about and you very quickly get defensive and push up against them. You won't let other people know that you're feeling this way but you might ruminate about that for a long time. You might toss it around in your head and think like why am I not able to do these things? This really sucks and you might start to feel that depression set in because you can't live up to that image that you have of yourself. Sometimes therapists get confused when we talk about depression and when they'll call this like a refractory depression. It's a depression that can't be treated. Nothing seems to break through and this is because a lot of therapists don't recognize that this kind of depression is not a true depression. It's actually narcissism that's creating these depressive symptoms. So if this is you, you probably feel like a victim all the time like things are always happening to you and nobody's listening to you not enough people are recognizing the great person that you are and it's really frustrating and agonizing and it's lonely it sucks to live this way okay so this was really basic sometime I would like to get into the details a little bit more but I hope that gives you an idea of what narcissism could look like and how it's not always just some jerk who's always uh, throwing themselves around and telling everybody how great they are that there's a little bit more to it than that and typically when it comes to narcissism what we need to do first is to listen to the person and not try to prove how they're wrong not try to point out their emotions because people who have narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, they have a lot of trouble with emotions. They don't want to feel vulnerable. They probably feel vulnerable all the time if they are the vulnerable type. And so you can't approach them pointing out what they're doing wrong or the way that they feel. You have to kind of go a little bit around about it and kind of get them to offer the information. Let them tell you what's going on. If you'd like to learn more about mental health, I have a special video coming out soon. It's my 300th video. Go to youtube.com slash Ryan Liberty and hit subscribe. Special thank you to my patrons who make videos like this possible. If you'd like to subscribe me and my mission of humanizing mental health head on over to patreon i'll put that link down below and now i'd love to hear from you if you see any of these traits or any of these patterns in yourself let me know what you think about them people don't really know who you are on the internet on youtube if you don't have your picture or any personal information up there so don't be afraid to share this might be a good opportunity to be vulnerable thank you for joining me out here everybody i'll see you around next time